In this Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes video, we wanted to go over the build that we're currently using for Dimitri. For those of you who need a quick refresher, Dimitri is the leader of the Blue Lions and the main lord of the Azure Gleam route. In general, Dimitri is a very powerful and strength-focused character who can pump out lots of damage and is just... we're biased, but we think he's one of the best characters in the game. In this video, we'll go over the build that we're currently using for Dimitri and show some of the gameplay so that you can see just how quickly, just how easily that this build dominates the entire endgame. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and discuss his class first. The best class that we recommend using for Dimitri in Three Hopes is his unique class, Great Lord. The way Great Lord works is it basically just improves Dimitri's prowess with the Lance. Um, it basically helps him deal more damage, and it also gives him a unique ability to throw Lances at enemies who are far away. Let's go ahead and discuss the equipment that we'll also be using for Dimitri. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and use his unique weapon, Ariadbar, which at level 17 has 240 might, 219 de 219 durability, and a unique skill called Lethal Blow, which essentially lets him deal full damage to enemies who are guarding. For the battalion, we've decided to give him the King of Lions Corps. Essentially, this gives him a one-tier greater advantage against enemies equipped with swords, and reduces the damage that he takes from them by 65%. And for the accessory, we've given Dimitri a monstrous strength ring, uh, basically just to give him even more attack power because his strength stat is going to be his highest stat. We also chose this because anyone who's played Three Houses will know that Dimitri was considered to be a monster after the time skip and when he essentially went snapped and went crazy, so we just thought it'd be fun to include this one as well. And then for Dimitri's combat arts, we've chosen two. We've decided to go with Parasaline, which basically has, is a very strong attack um, with a decent cooldown time of almost 13 seconds. And essentially this is a really good one because it lets it gives him a great amount of crowd control, which for a Musou game like this is definitely vital and keeps enemies away from you. And then for his kind of single target ability, we went with Night Kneeler. And the reason that we chose this is that a lot of enemies in the end game have our mounted units, so this deals extra damage to them and can also pierce their guard. So being able to almost essentially one shot these mounted units is going to be very, very useful for you. And then moving on to the actual abilities that we're using for Dimitri. So right now, because we maxed out the tactician tree he's allowed to equip 10 abilities and so for the 10 abilities that we're focusing on for dimitri we went ahead and start off with strength plus two because any boost to dimitri's strength is always going to be valuable we also went with apex lance which increases critical hit damage when he's using a lance um, because his unique weapon his unique class does use a lance this is also really going to benefit dimitri a lot um, one thing that we'll also note is that because this is a real-time action game you want as much critical hit chance and critical damage as you can get so that nearly all of your attacks are critical hits which just deals an insane amount of damage and then of course we also gave him the sword breaker ability Increases his damage to anyone who's using a sword by 50%. There are lots of basic enemies who use swords, so this is just really good to use. We also went with perspective because essentially what happens is by the time you're almost done with the map, um, you'll have captured probably five or six strongholds at that point. So this really increases the amount of damage that Dimitri can pump out. Boost critical basically just improving his critical hit chance because as I mentioned earlier you want as much critical hit chance and damage as you can get. Lance prowess, Dimitri uses a lance so let's go ahead and increase the damage he does with them by 30%. Savior of the Meek, this one I really like because Dimitri has a unique ability called Azure Lightning where he basically just deals damage, he basically imbues all of his attacks with devastating lightning damage and what this does is whenever he knocks enemies back that lightning is going to chain to other enemies and call and cause a small explosion that ends up dealing just lots of damage and i just really like this because with one combo dimitri can basically get rid of almost all of the 
minor units that are just annoying to deal with and really ramps up your KO count as you try to aim for that S tier rating. Then finally, the last three skills that we wanted to go over, strength plus five, because hey, more strength for Dimitri is always good. Backbone, this just reduces the chances of getting knocked back. You know, sometimes you're not going to dodge everything. So just being able to continuously attack and not worry about an enemy's attacks knocking you out is going to be very valuable. And then Wild Abandon is a very useful and unique ability. So essentially this lets Dimitri deal a lot more damage to enemies, but he's also going to take more damage. It's kind of a high risk, high reward playstyle, but essentially if you're able to be decent at dodging, then you can go ahead and put on the skill because you can dodge lots of attacks coming your way and then just keep damaging enemies and basically get to the point where you can one shot even bosses in every map. And then finally, Dimitri's unique crest is called the Minor Crest of Blade. This basically gives him a 20% chance to increase the damage that he deals with his combat arts in exchange for um, using more weapon durability. So it's a useful one. We like to use it a lot. And if it procs, great. If it doesn't, it's not the worst thing in the world. So now we'll go over just what some of the gameplay for this specific build looks like. So we just picked a random chapter 13 map and, you know, we're going to go ahead and switch over to Dimitri. You can just watch here how he's going to just completely wreck this entire, this entire map. So, um, you know, this is one of those things where you just keep attacking, go with the normal X, 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 Y combo and you'll just end up dealing lots of damage. Um, it's one of those things where I'll just have my allies focus on targeting enemies. I always like to send Mercedes out to the far one just for fun. You can see here with Dimitri, I'm just attacking. He knocks enemies back, that activates his Azure Lightning ability. As you can see here, I'm about to one-shot bosses like it's nothing. Those big yellow damage numbers show that we have critical hit damage. And then I accidentally have that activated his warrior gauge here but it's whatever and then we just keep going on and attacking and you know defeating enemies here i'm doing some basic strategizing to target enemies um yeah you know, i've got shez here going after some of the enemies here to help support felix since he has to deal with four named enemies by himself and here i am as dimitri just going in and attacking the stronghold after I capture the stronghold, his attack power will go up again just because of that, um, just because of one of the abilities that he has. And then again, one shot the boss there, ended up capturing that stronghold. Now we've got to protect a paladin, but I can just go ahead and assign someone to guard him so I don't have to worry about playing with Dimitri. But I think in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and support the paladin on my own because everyone else is too far away. And Mercedes is still dealing with the dealing with that troublesome mage so i go in i again lots of enemies that are attacking me sword master because i deal extra damage to them i'm just doing a basic com two two basic combos and ended up defeating that sword master with ease so here we've got some wyverns who are really annoying to deal with so just deal with them very quickly dimitri's lance throw is really good as well You can just see here, Dimitri is ridiculous. Um, as I said, he is probably one of my favorite Fire Emblem Lords right after Ike and Hector. So he's just, he's a lot of fun to play. And I just really enjoy playing with him and seeing what kind of damage we can just pump out to bosses and enemies. So here I switch over quickly to Mercedes so that we can go ahead and deal with the objective of defeating the Summoner. Switch back over to Dimitri. Again, a sword master. He deals lots of damage to them, so basic combo is doing more than enough to wreck its HP. And then at this point, I'm just mainly focused on driving up the KO count so we can get that S rank of, I think it's going to be 500 KOs for this specific mission. But here we just go ahead and just keep attacking, keep attacking, keep attacking. So switch over to Felix just to deal with some of those lingering enemies so we can move on to the next objective. Felix himself is also just a really insane character and 
we'll definitely be doing a build guide for him as well. And now here, we basically just have to defeat some enemies that showed up. So have Mercedes deal with the one on the far right. Have Felix deal with that one down there. Have Shez deal with... Yeah, Shez is going to help out Felix. And Dimitri will just go ahead and deal with this bandit who's already at low HP because the AI is pretty good at using him. And one thing that you'll also notice is even though we have that ability that causes us to take increased damage, our health is still almost full just because Dimitri deals with enemies so quickly that they almost never have a chance to attack. And because of the high durability of his unique Ariadbot weapon, it's currently at 219, we can use that Parasaline ability to really dominate our enemies and just deal, you know, more and more damage. So here and now we've got Felix protecting our um, Gremory. And now with Dimitri again, I'm just focused on driving up the KO count as far as I can. So dealing with lots of enemies, again, because he has the Azure Lightning ability, as long as I just attack enemies and knock them back, they're going to spread that effect to other enemies and cause kind of like a chain explosion. So as long as we have that chain explosion going on, you know, just it's going to ramp up our KO count as you're going to see here. So like we were just at 470, now we just hit 515, just like that through one combo. So you can see our KO count is going up pretty rapidly. Um, we, I think we only needed 500 KOs for the S rank here, but at this point I'm just, I should have checked the mission, but at this point I was just too lazy. I was like, you know what, let me just make Dimitri look even better. So just keep going, keep attacking. And yeah, you can see Dimitri is just, he's insane. He's overpowered. I love it. So again, Parasailene just knocks out all those enemies in one hit. Now we've got three named enemies that we need to go up against in order to complete the mission so that the Gremory can move on. And then, yeah, just basic combos again. And look, Dimitri's destroying everything on his own. So, you know, Dimitri's now killed 600 enemies by himself. A little more for good measure, and then the mission is basically over once the Gremory reaches her uh, her destination. So overall, this mission only took about six minutes to fully complete, and then I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit here, and then you'll basically see that we ended up getting the S ring as well. So let me just go back there. So as you can see here, completion time was four and a half minutes, 864 enemies defeated, and we only took 1% damage, which gave us about rank of S. So overall, Dimitri, very fun character, love building that guy. And if you want to just go ahead and dominate against your enemies, use this build and this game will be a cakewalk for you.